I would la like to now pass it over to my colleague, Congressman Mario diaz Bilart, uh, who serves on the Appropriations Committee. Mario. Thank you, Elise. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago, right, March, that we just finished the appropriation cycle? And you'd think that the lessons <laughs> that uh, uh, should have been learned, but we're kind of starting in the same place that we were last time. The Democrats are now operating under fake numbers, uni unilaterally uh, uh, decided by them, uh, with no input from uh, Republicans. And uh, there's no secret what needs to happen for us to have appropriation bills. Uh, the defense number is going to have to go up, and there's very strong bipartisan support to increase the defense number, and non-defense discretionary is going to have to go down. Uh, the non-defense discretionary has in, in their bills is increased by 14%. And so they prioritize some of the traditional liberal things that, frankly, are just uh, unreasonable under any standard. Let me just give you some uh, highlights, for example, because some of their increases in non-defense discretionary are just dramatic. 20% increase for the EPA, 17% increase for HUD, 30% increase for the Federal Trade Commission, 20% increase for OPM, and 433% increase for election security grants. And there are some areas where they increase that, frankly, it creates huge future liabilities. In essence, almost it becomes almost like de facto mandatory. And that's a case, for example, uh, with Section 8 vouchers in, in, in uh, the uh, T-HUD uh, part of it. And so, unlike what the Democrats continue to believe, you cannot address inflation by increasing spending. And yet, that is what they're, they're trying to do again. And so, while they do all that, they fail to address the energy crisis. Um, they actually make it worse. They pursue uh, some uh, partisan climate initiatives. Uh, offshore oil and gas uh, activities are further restricted. Oil and gas inspection fees are increased. Again, just making a situation uh, even worse. And, and something that we all know has to happen if we're going to have appropriation bills. We should have learned this. We just did them in March. Uh, the pro-life protections are stripped out of this bill, out of these bills again. There are no Hyde protections. So again, as we should have learned from just a few months ago, if we're going to have an agreement, this has to be a bipartisan agreement, defense has to go up, non-defense discretionary has to go down, down. they have to stop their, uh, their war on domestic energy and remove all these controversial partisan riders then we can move forward, but it seems that March uh, was such a long time ago for them that they've even forgotten the lessons that they should have learned just a few months ago.